Okay, in this tutorial we're going to be unwrapping this um, basic building asset um, and just introducing a couple of tools in the um, unwrap window. Okay, so first thing to do is to select um, open the model building.max, you'll find that on Moodle, and then apply an unwrap UVW to the model. Okay, if we go to open UV editor tab, and you can actually turn this off just to turn off that checker map. This is useful for if you want to show a texture in the background, like if you're mapping to a texture, but otherwise it's just going to show you the checker material, and I find that quite confusing to have on as well. Um, so you'll see the kind of default unwrap from this model is pretty much as you would get on any model, so just a complete mess. There's no way we can apply a texture to that. It's pretty much completely messed up UVs. Um, so obviously the way to approach unwrapping is to look at the model and you know make a few decisions before you actually start. Like for instance here, do we want to have these windows as separate elements to paint our texture? Do we want to separate this roof area from the main wall? Um, so those are the kind of things you need to kind of ask yourself before you start unwrapping, just to save yourself a bit of time. Um, so for this, we're going to leave the uh, we're going to have this roof area as a se separate to the walls, and we're going to leave the windows in the actual uh, wall unwrap area. Okay, so the first thing to do is to. Um, might as well just do the largest part here. So always a good way to approach unwrapping is to break it down into smaller elements rather than just one big element like this. So I'll probably start by breaking down each wall into individual sections. So um, what I want you to do first is to actually just select this whole wall face here. Now obviously that would be harder, um, hard to do just with the default settings. But if you come over here, you'll see you've got select by planar angle. And what this does is, for every area you select, it will select um, any polygons up within, within this angle here. So if I raise that something a bit higher, and select, you'll see it select up there. I'll probably raise it above 90, should select pretty much all of the model. So I'm just going to leave that on 1. just so I can select that entire wall face. And then I'm going to go to Mapping, Unfold Mapping. And you can see there we've got a nice unwrap for that wall face. I can then just go around and do each individual wall section. Okay, so once you've done that, you might be wondering why we didn't just select the whole area like so, and do one fold mapping on that. Let's just show you why. Uh, the reason being is it all it tries to keep everything stuck together, so you'll often end up with kind of curved area like that if you attempt too much in one go. You'll also see there's some kind of areas here. You know, it's going to be really difficult to paint that properly. There's some areas there where that should join up. And um, that's often a good way to approach Unfold, is to make a large selection and try it. If it doesn't work, then go back and break that selection down into smaller sections, like I did here. So I picked one wall, and then picked another side, another side, another side. OK, so that's kind of simple enough. That's those four walls done. So the next thing we're going to look at is the actual roof section here. So remember, I've got by angle turned on, so it's still selecting anything within any polygon that's within a five degree angle of my initial selection. So what we could try and do with uh, this roof section is again unfold that. 
we see that's the top section and then we could try first of all selecting those four and then unfolding those and there we go we can see the kind of curved effect it's given us there if I was painting tiles onto that it would be quite difficult to do with those at a funny angle like that so maybe what we'll try instead of doing it like that is actually selecting um, this area here, this area here and this area so it will be kind of curving actual curved around like that so I'm going to you'll notice if I keep biangle on I can select these two sides but if I select that it adds all of that so you've got two options here you turn off biangle and hold alt and just deselect and that works fine and then go unfold mapping and we'll line that up there. What's cool is you can see here, if I select this section here, um, it shows me a blue line. Um, and that basically telling you that an area of this selection is attached to this. So it makes it nice and easy to line up if you needed to do that. So we'll select the next side. Like so. And again do mapping unfold mapping sometimes it can be a little bit flaky like the blue edge thing you can see there it's not actually showing me that it's connected to that edge a bit annoying sometimes ok so another really useful tool actually is rather than selecting all these ones here so you could do that and that then select each one in turn. So if you do have a kind of complex unwrap, what you can do is select all those and we'll just unfold them as we did before. Like so. Let's say that it was actually much harder to do that, so you know we actually you actually have to move pieces around and use other types of mapping. If you have an area of your model that's identical, say this section here, you can right click, go to copy, and then making sure you select the exact polygons that you want. So we know that this side here is exactly the same as this side. You can right click and go to copy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right click and go to paste. I'll have to do that again, so copy. Select this area here and then right click and paste. And you can see that it pastes it perfectly. So again we can do the same here, right click on this area, copy, select those three and right click and paste. So you can see although it's not essential to do that for this model, if you had a more kind of complex area you had unwrapped and there was another area in the model that was the same then copy paste is kind of absolutely essential it can save you absolutely you know, hours hours of time ok so the next one we'll look at is this, is this top section again we're going to turn on by angle and just set up the top and this time we'll just use flatten mapping to flatten that out And we'll select uh, the last area of the model is these bits here so again I'm just going to select all those polygons and try and fold so that's our result so if we look at that you think well I want to have these three bits together it hasn't really given me a great interpretation there so what you do is um, break it down into small chunks so we'll use these three and this top section here so we'll try mapping unfold mapping on those three and there we go that's a much better interpretation now there's no seam in between these bits I can just paint straight up to those now the other thing about unfold is sometimes it's going to give you results like this where it's actually curved it round and you can see here these are all kind of straight on 
So this is where you can do a bit of manual tweaking to these UVs. So if you come to vertex mode down here, I'm just going to select these four vertices to make sure you've got element turned off. And I'm going to hold shift and just drag up to straighten that off. Okay, so the next area is this one. I'm kind of pretty happy with that. It's going to be difficult to avoid those seams. If you did want to, then you can just snap these to there. And to do that, just come to vertex mode and then turn on the snap, which is down there, and then drag the points to there. It will mean this area will stretch a bit, so you'll have to adjust that in your texture, but that can be a lot easier than trying to match the seams up here. And what I might also do is turn the snap off again. Let's kind of pull that down a bit too. Okay, so that's all the all the areas of our model there, but obviously we need now to fit them into this square here for our texture, and we also need to make sure they're all at the same scale. So to do that, if you come to your material editor, or just use M on the keyboard, select the material sphere, and in the diffuse slot, click on this little tab, and select checker. Then make sure you put your tiling up to 20, or kind of around about that number. And then hit the Assign Material to Selection button and make it visible. If you find it's a bit too big, you can always reduce your tiling down. Okay, so that's good, other than this area, this area here. You can see we've got a problem with that. So I'm just going to turn off my angle and deselect those. Now the reason that's happened is because I copy-pasted from there to there, and every now and then copy-paste does cause this issue. It is actually quite rare, but every now and then it does do it. It can be really annoying. I mean, you can either try try it again, see if that works. If it doesn't work, you just have to re-unwrap re it, unfortunately. Now, luckily here, we only used Unfold, so it's easy enough, but it can be really annoying if you've unwrapped something that's taken ages, you want to copy-paste it and it doesn't work. What I tend to do is actually um, put another Edit Poly on, delete that bit of the model and clone it over. It can actually be quicker than unwrapping it sometimes. Okay, so the reason we've applied this checker material is so that we can get everything at the same scale. And the way you do that is by looking at the size of each square and making sure that they are equal throughout the model. Now this isn't actually a bad job, so what I'm going to do is just scale some items down or, or up to show you what I mean. But those would be that big and our door is that big. You can look at that and you can say, right, I want everything to be the same size and the same scale. And obviously these checkers are much bigger than these ones. So to line it up, it's just a simple matter of making the selection of what you want to rescale and just scaling it to the right size. So I think what I want you to do actually is line everything up to these big ones. So it's going to select the walls, get that to roughly the same scale, and do that with these. I mean, you don't have to be completely precise, just as kind of accurate as you can be. Now, the other useful thing about the checker is you can see when you've got any stretching. So you can see here, there's that slight bit of stretching there. And that's where I connected the vertices together. So just to show you another example of that, if you come to vertex mode and say, select this vertex here on the end, and then 
pull that out, you can see the stretching on here. What you want to aim for is everything being square, like so, because that means there's not any distortion, and when you paint your texture, that won't have any distortion either. Okay, so here are all our sections now. So the only thing left to do is to pack them into the texture space. Now what you can actually do here is use Max's tools. So and you basically use the tools over here. So there's the arrange elements and groups. If I select everything and hit this button here, pack custom, you'll see it packs everything into the square. But what it hasn't done is actually put them in any kind of sensible order. Let's undo that. And so that is what this groups element is for. So what I'm going to do is select my four walls, group those, I'm going to select these four roof areas, group those, and move the door bit down there, I'm going to group the door, and I'm going to group this. And now if I select everything and go to pack custom, you'll see it's done it in a sensible order. So I've got all my walls, I know they're down there, Got my roof areas here, rooftop, and the door. Okay, so as we look at this at the moment, you can see the these are actually upside down. So you can see there, there's the top, and there's the bottom upside down. So it's a nice easy fix. I can just select the walls and go to tools, um, flip vertical, and now they're the right way up. So you've got all your flip tools in there flip horizontal, flip vertical. I can do the same for this section here if I, if I want to. So again I want this edge to be the bottom and so they're the wrong way around. So again select them, tools, flip vertical. And the same with the door actually. Okay so if you're thinking Obviously here we're wasting quite a lot of texture space. You can always change your grouping. So I might decide that I want to have um, these two as a group and these two as a group. So if I select all of my model, I can hit ungroup selected and then select all this area. Another little thing, if I'm selecting like that, you know, I might want to use select by element so that it just selects the whole pit. So we'll group selected on those, group those, group those two, and those two, group that, and that, and then select them all and hit group again. And again it's done them all upside down, so I can just select them all and go towards uh, flip vertical. Now you can see we're using a lot more space, we've still got our walls together and our roof areas together. Um, but now we're kind of wasting less space. So that's pretty much that building unwrapped. That's now ready to be taken into Photoshop to texture. Obviously this wasted space isn't ideal. For instance, I could pull this up to here. It is worth doing a bit of tweaking like this. Uh, when you finish, just to make sure you're not wasting any space that you don't need to. Because even though this is a simple model and there's nothing else added to it, you might want to add another model, so you might make another prop and then actually I use this texture space for that. Um, just to show you another thing we might consider is actually selecting the windows and taking those off. Now if I wanted to take those off and see it will stretch them out but you can use tools, break, actually just pull them off like so. Now you might want to do this just because again it will make it easier to paint the windows as separate bits. 
because if I'm trying to paint the texture on this and then the window is directly there, it can be really difficult to line it up. So it's better if you actually separate the windows off. Um, another thing we might want to do for the windows is actually move them down here. Just so if we did add another model to this unwrap, then there's this big space here to use for that. Okay, so that's building the uh, building unwrapped. Next thing we'll look at is unwrapping the gas canister.